trying to figure out which mirrorless camera is right for you, whether you're looking to start shooting YouTube videos or upping your zoom game, we've got you covered. In this video, we'll cover five of the top mirrorless cameras, including the best entry-level camera, best inexpensive option, best full-frame camera, best all-rounder, and our overall top pick. So let's jump into it. Let's start with the best entry-level mirrorless camera, the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark IV. Quite a mouthful. While being easy to use and budget-friendly, it doesn't cut back on features and is a great balance between still and photo capabilities. It can shoot 4K video at up to 30 frames per second and has in-body image stabilization. It has a micro four-thirds mount and sensor, which means there are a range of lens options from other manufacturers that you can use. And it takes the commonly used SD card. It has a flip down monitor, making it great for vlogging and self-recording. And if you want to use it for still photos, it has a 20 megapixel sensor. Because this is on the lower end of Olympus's cameras, it has a plastic build. So it's not going to have that stronger, tougher build that you find in more expensive cameras. Currently listed for about $650 for the body only. Now for the best inexpensive camera, we've got the Panasonic G7. This comes in at just under $500, lens included. And I say lens included because besides being the least expensive camera on our list, it is not a fixed lens camera. It has a micro four thirds mount, so you can use a variety of lenses, same as the Olympus. It can shoot 4K video, has a very maneuverable flip out screen, and takes easily available SD cards. Panasonic is great for adding video features to their still cameras, and despite its low price, the G7 has a microphone port to connect to an external mic for higher quality sound. It has decent autofocus as well as focus peaking, which outlines which parts of your image is in focus, another useful feature seen on video cameras. Now, since it's at a lower price, the sensor isn't as high quality as other cameras here. It caps out with the ability to take 16 megapixel photos. But still, for less than $500, it's an excellent camera. Plus, if you're looking to improve your zoom setup, you can plug the camera directly into your computer via USB and it will be recognized as a webcam. No adapters required. If you're enjoying this camera roundup and want more videos like this, including how to's and insight on how to put that camera to use, be sure to subscribe. Now for our best full frame camera, the Canon R5. Full frame refers to the sensor size and is the biggest you'll find in handheld style cameras, replicating the same size as 35 millimeter film. The Canon R5 takes advantage of its massive sensor and is a beast when it comes to specs. The sensor is a whopping 45 megapixels and it can shoot 8K raw video internally at up to 30 frames per second or 4K video up to 120 frames per second. Great for stunning, high quality, slow motion shots. It's also able to capture 10-bit 422 video in Canon Log. Uh, so it's got a range of super high quality video capturing options. And this is great for taking it into post-production later and color correcting. It's got excellent dual pixel autofocus and can track both people and animals. Its superb in-body image stabilization has up to eight stops of shake correction, making tripod-less long exposure shots crisper and smoothing out handheld video. It has dual CF Express card slots, plus an SD card slot, but for most of the high-res videos, you'll have to use CF Express cards, which are a bit more expensive than SD cards. This impressive video quality doesn't come cheap. The R5 is currently listed at $3,900, body only. Sony's got two excellent options for mirrorless cameras, the A6600 and the more expensive A7S III, which has a bigger sensor. But the A6600 is more than capable of being an excellent all-around mirrorless camera. It can shoot 4K video on its APS-C sensor with no recording limits and has excellent and fast autofocusing. It also has the ability to shoot in log, which opens up more color options after editing your video. If you shoot 1080 video at up to 120 frames per second, you can also connect via HDMI to an external recorder for even higher quality sampling at 422. That gives you much more color options. And this also has a Sony E-mount, uh, which is what Sony lenses use. While it doesn't have the crazy high sensitivity for shooting in low light as the A7S is known for, it still has excellent low light recording abilities, and it only has one SD card slot for something at this level you'd hope to see too. It sells for about $1,400, uh, but if you want something a little older, but overall still a great camera, you can pick up the older A6000. It's still just as capable as this newer version, but it's only $650. Uh, and like Panasonic and Canon, uh, you can plug these cameras straight into your computer and use them as webcams. The Sonys are particularly good at webcam and vlogging use because they have excellent facial recognition for autofocus, making self-recording with crisp shots a lot easier. And last, but certainly not least, our top pick, the Panasonic GH5S. Now this is still a micro four thirds sensor, so it's not as big of a sensor as some of the other cameras on our list, but Panasonic has consistently pushed the game with features you normally find in video cameras that make this a fantastic overall camera for both video and stills. It could shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second or 240 frames per second in HD. It can shoot in V-Log L and has HDR recording with hybrid log. 
It can also record 10-bit 422 video internally right on high-speed SD cards. I mentioned this before, but that opens up a lot of flexibility for color grading your image later on in post-production. This camera was also one of the first to introduce dual ISO. So every digital camera sensor is rated for a base ISO. And when you adjust your ISO setting to be more or less sensitive to light, the camera shifts using software to adjust the sensitivity to the sensor. Dual ISO introduces extra hardware so that the sensor can be set to two different baselines. In this case, it's ISO 400 and ISO 2500. So what that means is you get better low light recording capabilities with less noise. You can crank this thing up all the way to ISO 204,800, but I'm not saying that that's gonna be noiseless. There will probably be, be noise at an ISO that high. And the thing that I love about the GH line of cameras, lots of video features packed inside. It has audio in and out, Focus peaking, histograms, time code syncing. It's got a full size HDMI port, plus it has extra accessories where you can add full on XLR audio inputs. All this packed into a body that is only $1,800. Definitely the best bang for your buck. And that wraps up our roundup of some of the best mirrorless cameras. You can find all the product links in the description below. Agree, disagree, uh, got your own favorite? Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos and we'll see you in the next episode.